thing I just want to tell you is I have three kids that all have all grown up and I made it and I survived it and you will survive too. <laughs> you will survive, right, Kara, Dave, you will survive it. And I was looking around thinking, gosh, I think most all of you just have little ones. So you're, even though it's like physically tiring at this stage, this is the cute stage, the fun stage. It, the, the really other mentally exhausting stage comes when they start speaking for themselves and wanting to do things on their own and not always what you wanted them to do. Um, so I'm just going to share with you tonight a little bit of Roger and I's parenting philosophy, our parenting style, um, and I hope that it's helpful. You do not have to do what we did. You do not have to take any of my word as if it's a Bible. You do you, do you boo. You just do you. But I'm going to share some things that we did that tended to work um, really well for the kids that we have. Um, so yeah, I call tonight big picture parenting, and, and I probably should have called it start with the end in mind. Know where you're going. <laughs> know where you want to be. When your kids turn 18 years old, what do you want them to be like? What characteristics do you want them to value? What do you want them to do? How do you want them to do life? Um, and so we realized that when we flip the script and stopped worrying only about in the moment, at this age, what they're doing, and we kind of judged everything by what kind of people do we want them to be when they're 18 years old? So what is it going to take to get them to help them become those kind of people by the time they're 18? Um, and I guarantee you that if I were to ask you to take out a piece of paper and write down at least three things that you want your kids, characteristics you want them to have, things you want them to do well um, at 18, most of us would have the same kinds of things, right? We want them to be financially responsible, understand how to handle their money. We want them to be kind, right? We have all these lists. So we're going to boil it down, though, to three things. This is what Roger and I learned early on. We could boil down all of the things we wanted into three things. And that really helped us when we got into situations where we weren't always sure what to do. How do we approach this situation? How do we deal with this child doing this? But when we remembered what our three goals were, it became easier to figure out what we needed to do in that situation so that child would reflect those goals later. So we narrowed it down to three parenting goals, to be respectful, to be responsible, and to be resourceful. So just remember your three R's, respectful, responsible, and resourceful. And again, whatever you would have written down on a sheet of paper would fit into those, right? So if, if for instance, you said, I want them to be financial responsible, right? That's being responsible. So whatever it is, kind of narrows it down into those three things. Now, of course, we had a fourth one as well, which was to love God. But we also found out that by working on these other three, that helped them to have a, a healthy attitude towards God as well, right? Being respectful towards God, being resourceful with the talents and the gifts that God has given them to use and to do things with. So, now, that is not a new philosophy. I wish I could say I came up with a responsible, resourceful, respectful thing, and I'm going to write a book, and it's not a new thing. It's actually been around forever. Um, but it's funny because it's kind of making a comeback now, and everybody's calling it the, the new thing. It's not a new thing. I'm going to read this to you so you can see it's not a new thing. In the 1950s, during the height of America's post-war baby boom, Children were crammed into what today would be considered criminally overcrowded classrooms. But back then, it wasn't unusual to find only one teacher for 40 to 50 elementary age children. And those children, at every grade level, were achieving at considerably higher levels than today's kids, even more so than today's elementary classes, which tend to only have about 25 kids, and they have an assistant. How is that possible? Because for the most part, by the time the child of the 50s came to first grade, he had been taught in the home by the parents the three R's. Respect for legitimate adult authority. Notice I said legitimate, so don't freak out on how there's bad people. Most people are not bad people, right? Respect for legitimate authority, a willingness to accept responsibility, and a resourceful attitude toward challenges. So that became our goal as well. It was front and center in how we raised them. It's kind of how we, when we weren't 
sure what to do in a situation. Well, we want them to be these three things. What do we need to do to help this thing happen in this situation? Um, and so here's what I can tell you what happened as a result of us kind of employing this in our child group. Here are some of the things that we continually heard throughout our kids' growing up years. You have such well-behaved and respectful kids. They are welcome here anytime. Isn't that what you want to hear? Right? We never wanted to be the people that other people would say, gosh, we'd love to have Debbie and Roger over, but they're going to bring their kids. Right? And you probably know people that you feel that way about. Notice I didn't say that any of you are that way. Well, you don't know. Someone may be saying that about you. I don't know. But yeah, um, they are welcome here every time. And that's what we wanted to do. I can even remember one time being at a restaurant. And I don't know if Dylan probably doesn't remember because they were little. They were elementary school. We had all three boys there. And we were at the end of our meal. And I will never forget the manager of the restaurant coming over to us and saying, I just want to tell you what well-behaved kids you have. Dessert is on us. Wow. Yeah. I mean, that was a pretty, I mean, we didn't think anything of it because this is just what you do, how you behave when you're in public. We're, you know, we had the little car bag of surprises, the toys and things that kept them busy, but they knew we don't get up, we don't run around, we don't yell, we don't talk over other people, we don't, we just, we say yes sir, no sir, we thank people. Um, but that was a shock, so there you go. Um, coaches who would say, we wish we had more kids like your kids on our team. Teachers who would say, your kids are such a joy to have in class. I wish there were 10 more in here just like them. And then later as they grew old enough to work, bosses who would tell them, I wish we had more workers like you. Now, this is not a boast. Because trust me, if Dylan let me have the time, I would tell you all the bad things that didn't go so well. So don't think I'm boasting about how wonderful my kids are. But what I wanted you to hear is that it works. <laughs> that having a goal and knowing how you want your kids to be and raising them that way, it helps even at a young age. So um, the goal is that we were not raising children. We were raising adults. And you know why? Because they already know how to be children. <laughs> Nobody has to teach a child how to be a child, but they need you to teach them how to be productive members of society that other people want to be around, right? So we weren't raising children, we were raising adults, and we wanted to equip them for adulthood. Not, we didn't raise kids that got these kinds of compliments because it was a pat on the back to us. That didn't even matter. We needed them when they are 18 to be able to go out and have a life and do well without needing us every step of the way. That, that handicaps them when your child is an adult and they still need you to help them with everything. And so that's what we were working against. Um, and we also um, had these things as our goal because Proverbs 22.15 tells us that foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. So I know you think your little darlings are so special and they're just going to be perfect. And I thought that, that mine would be too. Um, and they're not, but the Bible's already giving you a heads up. It's given, God's giving you a heads up. Foolishness is in their heart. They don't know any other way to be. They don't know any other thing to do. So teach them well. So raise adults. You're not raising children. So I'm just now I'm just going to spend a few minutes on each of those three things, kind of give you an idea of what that looked like in our household. So on the, the subject of teaching them to be respectful, it means to be respectful of legitimate authority figures, legitimate authority figures and others, teachers, coaches, friends, whatever. It's listening, it's following rules, it's paying attention, it's obeying quickly. So for us, there was none of this, we're going to count to three, because we've already said it five times, but now we're going to count to three, why? Because you know their boss is going to do that for them, right? When they have a job, their boss is going to say, all right, I needed that report yesterday, I'm going to count to three, right? So you obey quickly. It's not just obeying, but it's obeying quickly when you're told to do something. It's learning to respect not only authority figures, but peers and themselves. Peers, authority figures, parents, themselves. It's a necessary skill for being successful in life, right? You all probably have people at work that you wish you didn't have to work with. And I always think, 
I wonder what their parents were like. Because <laughs> this is someone who was not taught how to behave well and how to be respectful of other people. So basically, respect is, is the golden rule. Do unto others as you will one day want them to do unto you, right? Do unto others as you will one day want them to do unto you. So here's what it might look like when we were teaching our kids to be respectful. Just a couple of examples. Um, one of the things we always told the boys at the beginning of school years, because we always had a night before, like dinner at the dinner table where we discussed school and what the expectations were and that kind of thing. And one of the things we did used to tell them is that, understand, oh child of my heart, that if your teacher contacts us or sends a note home, we will believe the teacher. We will believe the teacher. So be forewarned. We will expect you to adjust your behavior accordingly. So we were already setting them up that you're not going to come, well, she doesn't like me, or well, it's just hard, or we're going to believe the teacher. So respect your teacher so she doesn't have to send any of those kinds of notes home to us. Um, one other way that that looked like, I remember when Jordan was in elementary school, Jordan was a very touchy-feely kid, which is so funny because of all my kids, he's the lead, he's so not touchy-feely now. But his, he, he was a very, like, just constantly touching you and that kind of thing. And I remember one time, I think he was like in second grade, maybe third grade, but his teacher sent a note home and she said, um, love Jordan, he's so sweet, but he's going to have to learn how to keep his hands to himself when he's playing outside with the other kids. You know, he would just get so excited, and he's just touching and pushing and that kind of thing. And we said, okay, thank you very much for letting us know that. We will have the conversation with Jordan. And so that night we had the conversation with Jordan about how well it's not appropriate, and, I, we were, and of course... When I talk about these things, it's always from a positive. It's never, this is what you have to do, but we love you, and because we love you, this is what we would like for you. So we have the conversation with Jordan to say, you need to keep your hands to yourself. We love that you love your friends so much that you just get so excited. So we understand that. And sometimes I get really excited, too. I, we understand. But we have to have boundaries, and we can't be touching people. So you need to keep your hands to yourself when you're playing. Okay, went to school. End of the week, got another note from the teacher saying, oh, he's, he had a good day, but then he kind of went back to he's, you know, pulling on them and touching them. And I said, okay, I promise you we will have this fixed by Monday. Um, and so here's what we did. We had sat Jordan down again, and we explained, you didn't take care of the problem you created. <laughs> and that's part of responsibility. You have created a problem that you need to fix, right? So we're going to help you fix it. And we always told our kids, you will not like it if we have to help you fix problems that you create. But we're here. We're happy to help you if you need our help. And so we said, Jordan, here's what's going to happen. We're going to write a note to your teacher. And I made up a sheet. And I said, every day this week, she has to sign it at the end of the day to tell us how you did. So you have to keep your hands to yourself. And your teacher has to sign that you, in fact, did that every day. So here's the funny part of that story. It worked. But what was funny is the teacher, the, the first day he came home with that note, she sends me an uh, email that night saying, oh, no, 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 I didn't mean it. You didn't have to do anything like this. I didn't mean that. I mean, he's a good kid. And I'm like, okay, you can have it both ways. You either need help with the situation or you don't need help. But no, no, no. We believe the teacher. If you tell us this is a problem, we're going to help you fix the problem. And, of course, so that fixed the problem because Jordan didn't want to have his name written down every day. But that's teaching him respect for other people. That when someone asks you to stop, you stop. When they say, don't touch me, you don't touch them, that kind of thing. So why do we do that? Again, to teach them boundaries, to teach them respect. Um, and so that's the kind of thing when we would think, how, and we did, we weren't sure what to do about the situation. Because it's like, how do you punish someone who's not really doing a bad thing, but he's doing something that he does need to get control of himself? We thought, oh, the three things are respect, resourcefulness, and responsibility. We need him to respect that people have boundaries. And so that's how we kind of came up with the idea that we could gloss over this with the teacher, right? We could go, oh, well, it's not a big idea. You know, he's doing better. Or we could say, that's not what we want for our child. <laughs> that's not what we want for him long term. And so that's why we came up with that solution. So the results of being respectful with other people, they'll like themselves more. They'll have self-respect and self-esteem. And by the way, no one can give you self-esteem. You get self-esteem 
because of what you know you're capable of doing. That's where self-esteem comes from. So in doing that with Jordan, it was giving him self-esteem as well to know that he could control himself, that he could stop doing this if he put his mind to it. They'll also get respect from others when they behave that way towards others, others give that back to them. Um, and of course, the caveat is that when they come to know God, they have a tendency to understand a healthy respect for legitimate authority figures. So, all right, responsibility. Um, it means a willingness to take charge and ownership of what is yours to manage. What is yours to manage. Dylan's story. Um, Dylan has shared a couple times, I think, in his message, one story, one, and I just, now that I have the mic, Dylan, I'm gonna tell him the rest of the story. Um, the time that he came home with bad grades, remember, and he thought he was gonna get in real trouble, he's like, I'm gonna get grounded, it's gonna, we went to the movies that night, and the only thing they said was fix your grades, right? Well, again, what do we want for Dylan? We want Dylan to learn responsibility. We want him to learn to be responsible for the work that is his to manage. And so we had purposely planned that we were not going to just punish him and say, fix that, because then that's us, us taking care of the problem. He needed to take care of the problem that he created. They were his consequences to bear. So we did sit him down at the movie theater and we said, you've created a problem for yourself. You have these grades and these grades are unacceptable to us for you. And you need to fix this problem. It was an interim report card. And we said, so here's the great thing. You have until the report card comes out, the real one, to have this fixed. If you don't fix it by the time the real report card comes home, oh, child of my heart, we will be happy to help you fix your problem. And you won't like how we help you fix it, but we will be glad to step in and help you fix the problem that you have created. And so from our perspective in that story for Dylan, we were trying to teach him you're responsible for problems you create, right? Our kids are responsible just like you are responsible for problems you create. Take responsibility for those things, fix your problem. Now, Roger and I were there any time the boys needed help fixing their problems, and we would always tell them that. But one, one thing we did not do that whole time was constantly ask Dylan, how was it going? How's it going? How are your grades going? You getting those up? That's not teaching him responsibility, right? And that's also nagging parents. And who wants nagging parents? And so from time to time, we would say, do you need help with anything? Anything we can do to help you? Because we love you and we're more than happy to help you. But we didn't nag, we didn't check up. And guess what? Lo and behold, Dylan fixed his own problem. Self-esteem again too, right? A child who believes I can fix problems and my parents and other people don't have to step in and fix everything for me. We wanted Dylan to know we believed he could fix it, right? Again, self-esteem. We believe in you. We believe that you're smart enough and good enough. You can fix this problem. You're a smart kid. This is no match for you. So just make sure you have it fixed by the time the next report card comes around. Do not do for children what they could or should be doing for themselves. And that's a hard one, especially when they're little and you want them to hurry up all the time and it takes them forever just to tie a shoe, right? Or just to put a shirt on. Um, but don't do for them what they can do for themselves. You can guide them, but for instance, once they know how to brush their teeth, that's theirs to manage. You're not doing them any favors by constantly doing it for them or with them. If they need help, that's fine. But do you understand what I'm saying? The more you can help them take on responsibility for things that are theirs to manage, the better their self-esteem will be and you'll enjoy your life a little bit more. And you'll be raising adults who understand that when something is given to me, it is my responsibility to take care of that. And then as they get older, you let them gain more responsibilities. You turn control over their own lives to them as soon as possible. And that goes against so much of what people are doing parenting-wise today. I understand that. But as soon as you can, turn it over to them. Let them take charge of what is theirs to manage. They will be responsible adults. The other thing we used to hear all the time when our kids were growing up was how mature they each were for their age. And I'm like, well, no, it seems to me like an eight-year-old should be able to do that. But okay, thank you for the compliment. They can manage it, and you want them to feel good about themselves, show them that you believe they can do that. 
if it's chores, whatever it is. Um, let them learn their own life lessons. Don't rescue them. It's tempting, but your job is to guide them, not to do things for them, not to fix every problem that they have and every problem that they create. Um, not being a responsible human being can put you and others into a hot mess really fast, right? So we want them to be responsible. And lastly, resourceful. We want our kids to be resourceful. Do you know what that means? We want them to have a resourceful attitude towards challenges. Don't give up early. Don't give up too soon. Don't let them wind their way after, out of having to help figure out what's the best thing to do in this situation. The consequences or rewards of being a resourceful person is that they learn they can be creative and think outside the box. And they can do things in a way that is uniquely them. And guess what? There's a self-esteem building point, right? That I can actually come up with solutions to this problem. I don't have to sit here and whine or cry. I don't know. I don't know. I can't do it. Well, what? let's think of some things. So guide them when they're little. My goodness, guide them. But say, let's think of some things you could do. Hmm, what could we do? And then when they come up with a good solution, it's saying, that is such a great idea. I'm so glad you thought of that. How creative you are. And you're teaching them not only to be resourceful, but you're giving them a tool that even as an adult, I can figure out how to get out of and how to take care of difficult situations. I just have to think through it. So that's a big one for us. Um, really quickly, I can tell you a story from Logan about that. Logan, as most of you know, is in California. He's living his best life because he's on a big, I don't know, what do you call it? I'm not a gamer. He's a big gamer. You know, he's with a, he has like 50,000 Twitter followers, and when he comes here and he goes places, half the time people want his autograph. That's what I'll tell you. He does videos and photography and all that, but I guess he's really good. And in the whole gaming industry, I guess this is a really big deal. So, but I can remember back when Logan was a child in an elementary school, when he first started showing, he had a real talent for it. He started out with photography, kind of weird pictures, like they were never a people. They were things that it was like, well, I wouldn't have thought to look at that that way, but that's a really cool picture. And so then that developed and he loved doing videography and, and making videos and stuff. And then somehow at some point he started switching over to, he would take, um, videos of, and again, I know all you men in here that do video games will know what I'm talking about. He started taking their videos of them playing a game and making and editing their stuff and then just posting it kind of thing. And so he began to get a lot of people that started following him on Twitter and stuff going, that's really good. Could you do that for my thing? Well, he loved doing that. And one day we were having a conversation when he was about to go into high school and he's like, I, I said, you're really good at this, Logan. I, I'm really proud of you. I'm proud of your talent. I'm proud of how dedicated you are to it. He said, yeah. He goes, I wish I could work for Halo or something someday. I said, well, resourcefulness, what could you do that might help you work for Halo or something like that? And we brainstormed a whole bunch of things. And he said, well, I guess I could just really always make sure I'm putting more videos out there. And he said, maybe I could tag Halo in some of the videos that I'm doing. And there were other big names, but I don't, I don't remember what they are besides Halo, because I don't know games. I just know it wasn't Mario Kart or anything like that. <laughs> so that's all I can tell you. And sure enough, by the time he was in high school, Halo was contracting him to do those kinds of videos. And some of those other big video games in high school, he was already getting paid by these companies. Now, they were using him for their websites. It's not like it was a big, but he started that. And by the time he went to college, when he got out of college, he had big companies that wanted him. Resourcefulness. Teaching your kids to be resourceful. Teaching them the sky's the limit. Possibilities are endless when you're a resourceful person. So I'm going to end now because I have so much more to say. And it's so important. <laughs> but I will end now. So I will just end with this. In teaching them to be respectful, resourceful, and responsible, do not neglect that they need to feel very loved in order for them to grow under those kinds of expectations. We don't want to set expectations without them feeling the love 
Because if they feel loved and they feel they have your support and that you're not being mean to them, like in Dylan's case by saying, you need to fix this or I will help you fix it, right? <laughs> they know that they were loved. So I will say that. Lead everything with making sure your kids feel loved and they'll follow you just about anywhere. And I also want to say this really quick. There's no guarantees, right? We all know people that are really good parents. They were really good parents and their kids have strayed away. And that just comes back down to sin nature too, right? We all have free will. We can do whatever we want. We can get in with the wrong crowds. So there's no guarantees. But heck, I don't know about you, but I want to up my odds that I'll have a decent person by the time they're 18, so I'm going to do these things. I will say this. I, I thought about this once when I heard um, the story of an a older gentleman who went into um, Home Depot and was looking for something, couldn't find it, didn't know what to do, and so he asked um, for help. And it was a high school boy that came to help him with what he was looking for. And in this little story that he's writing, he says he was so helpful and he was so respectful. And he said he was very creative in helping me figure out solutions of what to do. And he goes, I, it was just a, a joyful experience to work with him. And I love the last thing this gentleman said because he said, when I left, I said to my wife, that's a boy who knows his parents love him. That boy knows he's loved. The lessons were worth it because he knew he was loved. So that's what I would say to you all. Thank you. Resourceful, responsible, respectful. That's my question.